2017 energy sector scan in Sierra Leone shows that it has 99.6 megawatts of installed power capacity for a population of approximately 7 million people. This is no ordinary ship. It is one of the two diesel power stations here in Freetown. It is said to produce at least 30 megawatts of power that are injected into the national grid. Just about 15% of the total population of Sierra Leone currently has access to electricity. Of this, only 2.5% of its rural population had access in 2016, according to World Bank data, way below the average of 42.8% for the population of Sub-Saharan Africa. The deployment of power generators is increasingly becoming a requirement for businesses to remain competitive as a result of the frequent power rationing problem. Since 1994, we're facing a lot of challenges for, for electric power, so unless we, we use our generators. And generators will face, will face so much challenges. You have to buy fuel, you have to buy engine oil, repairs. Spear parts. Using generator, I spend a lot. I'm using uh, five gallon a day, which is at, at now. This is, is, is 180,000 of at, at now. As you can see, presently I'm having a generator. The electricity supply is not frequent. Initially, we should we normally have an electricity supply from 10 to 4 o'clock, and after 4, we get it from 6. But presently, it is not forthcoming. All my machines are down. They are all faulty because of the power supply. I normally use five to six US dollars a day to buy fuel. And that's an, a lot of time my generator is, will get a breakdown where I spend a lot of money. So that made me not to earn enough money for my business. This welding shop. This welding shop has been here, but we are straining due to unreliable electricity supply. A customer's job that should take a day now lasts a week or even two. It's causing us so much embarrassment. We should be receiving electricity supply from 12 o'clock, but now it's 3 o'clock and we still do not have lights. We have no job to do. No one will give you a job and you have no power. And I do not have a backup generator either. Now then for you light, but see now, at 3 o'clock so we not get light. The electricity tariff regime in Sierra Leone is heavily subsidized and remains one of the highest on the continent at 0.28 US dollars per kilowatt hour. Utility firms and the regulator have been in talks to improve cost recovery for private investors. This is one of the largest agriculture investments ever undertaken in Sierra Leone since independence. Established in 2010, this sugarcane plantation has over 6,000 hectares of land under cultivation. I'm in Bombali district, northern Sierra Leone, to find out how this sugarcane is being used to solve the energy problem. Sunbird Bioenergy is a privately run biomass power generation project that seeks to contribute to the national power mix. Great, how are you doing? You. Welcome to Sunbed. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have planted uh, sugarcane. We produce bioethanol out of the sugarcane. We have the largest biomass power generation project and we have the capacity to produce 32 megawatt of power. We thought that the sugarcane is the best crop in the world. It not only creates jobs, but also it adds value to the economy in a large way as well as it sequestrates all the pollutants of the environment. You're doing about 4,300 hectares on this particular piece of land. At full capacity, what do you envision and how much power are you likely to produce? We are geared up to produce uh, 32 megawatt itself. When you talk about the accessibility of power, only 15% people have the power in this country. Sugar production, bioethanol production and power export goes hand in hand. So once we get the, the, su, su, the power export uh, letter from the government, we are going to plant another 4,500 hectares of sugar uh, in view of exporting all 20 megawatt uh, power out of bag assets. You pride yourself as a producer of green energy. Give us a mental picture of what it looks like and what it takes to do this. Mm, our plan is to go for uh, about 100,000 metric tons of 
sugar production within next two years period and we have to plant another 4,500 hectares which is in plant. Once that is done, we would be capable of producing 100,000 metric tons of sugar. And uh, our, what we really want to do here is to provide as much as possible jobs to these communities. We cover about 53 communities covering about 25 schools. The offtake of power is the main challenge for us. And as for the PPA that is in place, we are supposed to be supplying 90 to 120 gigawatt hours. So in case the government can take all 100 gigawatt hours, we should be able to make it a viable project. Let us go to the factory and see how it is taken place from the front end to the back end. So these are the two boilers we have and both these uh, boilers are in uh, full operation. But we are using only one boiler, not up to the full load because we need only 10 megawatt. But in case we use both the boilers, we can export uh, 20 megawatt to the grid. What process does this can go through until you have your source of power that you can now use or off-tech to the national grid? Once we harvest from the field, we do the haulage up to the factory and we have uh, automatic loaders to the, the feeders and we feed it and what we do is we do a kind of a milling there. After crushing, we take the sugar juice out for the rest of the process of uh, uh, distillation and then the balance is the fibre contents that is left behind that is collected on a conveyor that is called bagasses. So the bagasses goes and feed directly into the boilers. How about the issues about the cost implication when you're looking at uh, how much you would save in green energy vis-a-vis -a, -vis a diesel powered uh, form of generation? The diesel power for you to generate, you need to bring the HFO produce uh, you know, fuel that is called dirty fuel. Or whereas we collect the grass from our communities, where the money paid goes back to the communities. The difference is that for you to buy the HFO, you need to pay in dollars. The country should have sufficient amount of forex and whereas uh, this operation doesn't need any forex involvement. So in terms of uh, empowering the poor, empowering the communities, I mean this is the solution to reciprocate even for another country I would say. It's not just industries that bear the brunt of expensive but unreliable power supply. Households too have to contend with these challenges. Lights Alone is an innovations hub that brings together a group of young people to create lasting solutions. We are able to power up to 50 houses in that particular community using the same technology. The only difference was we use a bigger printer, uh, sorry, motto, and also a longer or bigger PVC pipes as the blade to capture the wind. Light Salon also offers training and internship opportunities to university students nurturing their practical skills in science and electronic engineering. Our goal is to provide um, low-cost energy for rural communities and we are using um, recycled materials to provide um, these energy appliances to supply houses in the rural communities. What prompted the formation of this group? So in 2017, I was working with one of my friends in a community where we raising awareness about teenage pregnancy. And then there was this village, the, the Serabu village, that has about 80% of the teenage girls there, they were pregnant. And some of them were dropout, some of them were um, teenage mothers. And so when we asked them why, they told us it was because they didn't have light to study at night. And so this really got us because as a young teenage girl, seeing others like us being in the village, not able to go to school, not able to study because of electricity or because of energy, was something that, that was really, really so surprising to us. And so wanted to see how best we can be able to provide energy for these, um, these girls in the, in the rural communities. We want to provide electricity or energy to all the households in the rural communities because this has been energy has been something that has been a big issue in Sierra Leone and just think about the, the hospitals that are there think about the schools think about the businesses that are going on there and without energy and 
us as young people wanted to find solution to this problem. So we des we designed the solar wind. So the solar wind is the combination of solar energy and wind energy, because w our goal was to provide energy that can be effective and efficient. We fabricated these things using recycled materials and then we took it to the Cerebro community and we were able to power about 50 houses in that community. What are some of the innovations you've been able to put forth as a group since you came together? So besides the sewing, um, we have been able to do the plastic, um, plastic bottle light and of course we have, so we have been able to build our own solar panel and we have a, a free energy, um, free fuel, a free noise energy generator. And we have our solar backpack and of course we have the solar books. Despite such remarkable initiatives, the power rationing continues to hurt the economy due to the power demand exceeding supply. Let's listen to the expert on how entrepreneurs can turn around this problem into sustainable business opportunities. Businesses within Sierra Leone find it difficult to operate because there is no fixed and reliable electricity supply. So businesses are losing profits, um, homes are losing their properties. So it's a big challenge for our people to operate businesses and new emerging industries cannot make profit or even operate because electricity is not available and it's of course expensive as well. Here are the tips for businesses to survive and make profits during this power shortage period in Sierra Leone. One is to make sure your business does not rely on the use of electricity or whatever form of electricity. You also need to make sure you work within the time frame where the electricity supply is available in the country. So if the government supply is within six, is within 12 hours, make sure your business operates in 12 hours. Another tip for people or businesses is that you need to make sure you, sh you those in the same building can share the electric fuel bills by teaming up together with other businesses. Another tip which is very important is that you need to watch your buildings that already have Power, back, um, power backup generators, so with that you are sure of constant and sustainable and reliable electricity at your disposal. So we also see this as an opportunity for investors to invest in businesses that has to with, do with electricity generation and supply. You can invest into solar, you can invest into um, hydro, you can invest into so small scale wind and many other renewable energy options because there is high demand for this sector and of course you can of course make a lot of profit at the end of the day. Another tip for businesses operate within, within Freetown, you need to make sure you have power guards for your devices and uh, offices for your properties not to be get broken. Because the electricity supply is not constant and there will be disruptions at any time.